what is going on everybody hope all is well welcome back to another video um i saw this post and i want to touch on it because it actually kind of aligns with the last video that i um that i started or that i did rather and if you haven't had a chance to watch it's called the fork in the road it's your choice and i get into a whole um, conversation regarding a pastor named ron reagan I had to kind of think about it because like I want to say Ronald Reagan, the former president of the United States, because their name is so similar. But it's, his name is actually Ron Reagan. He basically talks about um, his life and how he almost went to hell. He actually got a chance to experience it. But that actually changed that experience, helped him change his life. And where he now he's a pastor or he's a reverend and he, you know, he's a founder of four different churches and so forth. So I definitely encourage to watch that video also in that video, I also dropped the link of his actual um, interview or his testimony where he actually talks about it more in depth. I'm telling you, it's such a phenomenal video to watch. It's an eye opener, especially for those who may question or or just wonder is hell real or and there's plenty of other videos. If you go on YouTube, you actually Google it, you'll actually could see other people actually talk about their experience, you know, these near death experiences where it seems like they died and went to hell. And there's some actually too, who actually talk about where they actually went to heaven. So I definitely just encourage you if you haven't already just to check this out, but I saw this post this morning. So I'll be honest, I didn't really have any attentions to do any kind of recording because honestly, I, you know, I'm trying to save everything up for season two, but these topics comes up and I feel it in my spirit. There's like, you know what? Let me talk about this again. These are appetizers until the actual full season comes out. But this, this meme, not meme, sorry, this post that I saw, and this is by um, Lisa Victoria. Um, if you don't, for those who don't know who she is, she is the CEO and, and co-founder of the Jude project. Um, if you get a chance, you know, follow their IG page. I follow it, you know, and I really feel like it's a, this is good for those, especially in this generation, like the millennials, Gen Z, those who may question Christianity or just like maybe have church hurt, things like that. They really kind of cater to that audience, not only that audience, but it's just a lot of, you know, good questions and conversations that gets brought up and, you know, things that you may feel you may not get at your local church, but they're able to kind of break down. So I definitely encourage just, you know, just to follow their page, take a look at it, check it out. But she posted she put a post up and this post was back in 2016 and it says this so many wonder why a loving god would send people to hell i wonder why those who didn't love him and serve him on earth want to spend eternity with him in heaven heaven is heaven not because these are streets of gold and mansions etc but because god is there we finally get to be with him or be with be one with him who first loved us and sacrificed his life for us so if you did not want him on earth, why do you want him in heaven? Could it be that could it be that he just given those who didn't want him their desires or their heart a life absent of him? Hashtag just a thought. And I thought I was like, wow. So this is very, very um a beautiful, beautiful response. And I'm not sure what prompt her to write this or or to Twitter this. Um, I'm going to assume that maybe this is a question that somebody asked her, but I know this is a common question, right? You know, I've had conversations with relatives or just other people like, yo, God is so real. You know, why there's suffering? Why is all the stuff that's going on? Or if God is so real and he loves us so much, why does he send people to hell? And I felt this response that she wrote, I couldn't say it any better. I couldn't. Cause you're basically asking God like, Hey God, um, I didn't spend time with you. Don't really know who you are. Didn't really care to. I wanted to kind of live my life the way I want to live my life. And then now when it comes to the time of me going to heaven, I want to be there with you. But God is like, I, I don't know you. Well, I do know you, but you did not want to spend time with me. So why is it now all of a sudden you want to be invited into my kingdom? And I, I feel like a lot of us, it's that fork in the road. It happens to, um, it happens to quite a few people where they question that like, but God loves it. and he does. God loves us. The Bible says that there's nothing that can separate, separate us from the love of God, which is very, very true. 
in the same token, in the same token, um, and I believe it says Romans chapter six, verse 23, it says for the wages of sin is death. So sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what makes us distant from God. God is a God of free will. He's never going to force himself on us. Not at all. God wants us to make a choice. God wants us to make a decision regarding your salvation. He wants you to make the decision and wants to come him. He wants that authentic love. He doesn't want anything where you're that you're forced to love him. So if you choose to make the conscious decisions like, hey, you know what? I don't really care to spend time with God. I don't really care to live with God. I don't really care to have God in my life. Then that's your choice. Then if that's the truth, then he's technically giving you the desires of your heart. So which means that when it's time for you to die, because the only thing that's really guaranteed in life is death. Then he's going to grant you your wish. You didn't want to spend time with me while you are alive. So why you don't want to spend time with me in heaven? There's only two choices when you die. It's either heaven or hell. So if you don't want to go to heaven, then the only other option is going to be hell. And by that point, it becomes too late. You can't turn around and make a different choice. Like God is very, the Bible says God is patient, slow to anger. So God is not this God of wrath. But in the same token, if you keep pushing him away, he's going to stay away. He's going to be there watching you, but he's going to stay away. And when he stays away, guess who's going to get a hold of you? Satan. Satan's going to put all these evil thoughts and desires in your heart and make you live a very carnal, sinful life. But then the question arises like, but how if I live the good life? Like, how about if I didn't want a relationship with God, but I was able to on Sunday mornings get up and, you know, walk the, the nice old lady across the street and help her with her groceries? You know, on Thanksgiving, you know, I, I feed the homeless. You know, I, I make sure that I pay my bills all the time. If I see a homeless person on the streets, I, I give them change. I give them money. You know, I do all these great things. I volunteer at my local community you know, with the young boys and girls, I do all these great things, which is great, which is great. And these are things that I definitely would encourage to do because humanity, society, we need more of that. But at the same time, we're also doing this on our own. We're not doing this to fulfill God's will. We're doing it for our own flesh and our own benefit. Basically, we're receiving all the glory and God wants the glory when we're doing anything good because he provides for us. Remember, he gave us life. You know, the food that we have on the table, God provides that for us. The money that we make, God provides that for us. So even when we feel like God is not involved, he's very much involved. He is. He's the one who opens all those doors, all those good things that takes place. He does that for us. He takes us out of situations that we may not realize. He protects us. Like I remember back in 20, 2002, this was the year anniversary of 9-11. I had just moved back from New York to Florida and I was living in South. I had moved back down. I had to move down to Southwood for the first time. And I started this new job. I was 21 at the time. I didn't turn 22 yet. And I was heading to work. And I remember at the time I, I was, um, I was dating, um, my child's mother, who I end up marrying, um, but you know, we're along together, irrelevant for this video. But anyways, um, <clears throat> I remember I, I left her house at the time she lived in Kendall, but she was going to university of Miami and I was, I got a job working in, um, what's that area called again? Tamarack, Tamarack, which is about North of Fort Lauderdale. And so I remember leaving her house and I don't know why I said this. I said that because, you know, this is the year anniversary of 9-11. So it's, it's, it's a day of remembrance. And I remember leaving the house saying, it's like, man, you know, hopefully nothing happens to me on my way to work. Don't know why I said that. That was stupid. So I'm driving to work and I remember I was on Commercial Boulevard and I was like maybe like a block and a half away from my job. I just started this job. I think I've only been working there maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month, if that. And this lady, she basically makes a U-turn in incoming traffic and slams right into me, right? I didn't have a seatbelt on. At the time, I would I would really wear a seatbelt and I was going at least 60. Car goes out of, out of control, fall out the car, 
laying in a pile of ants, my whole, you know what I'm saying? The, my whole left side of my body bitten up completely. Rushed to the hospital and everything like that. Airbag goes off. I'll never forget. I didn't sustain any major injuries, right? Just back pains. A couple of days later, I actually go to get my car because my car was totaled. So I go to the tow shop um, or the impound or whatever it was at with my aunt. And I remember the guy at the impound place says, this is like, that's your car. I don't know how you survived that. Like my whole car was smashed in and I was able to, for the most part, walk away. That was God. That was God protecting me at that time without realizing it. And so I say that to say like God is he's always there walking with us. But the thing is, if we keep pushing him away or we're making it seem like we want to do life without him and not spend time with him where he doesn't really exist, what's going to happen when it comes to our existence expiring? Because that's something that is guaranteed. No matter what, that's guaranteed. Death is guaranteed. Nobody cheats death. Only one person who cheated death, and that was Jesus Christ. But nobody cheats death. And so when you die, there really is just two choices. Again, I spoke on a video, a testimony on a guy who went his throughout his whole life, his first 25 years of his of his ex existence, did not know God, did not know Jesus, live a very, very dark, violent life. And he had a near death experience and he actually went to hell and saw his friends in hell who all died a traumatic, violent death because of the life that they lived. And that became an eye opener for him. He survived. God gave him a second chance. But what happens when God doesn't give you that second chance? What happens when it comes to that time where it's like you're it's time to clock out and there is no way of turning back. So Jeff, how do I get saved or, or, or how does this work then? Well, remember we're saved by grace, right? So the way you get saved is by confessing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and savior, right? Let's go to scripture. Um, <clears throat> so John 14 verse six famous verse says, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the father except through me so again it goes back to what i was just saying that confessing that jesus christ is your lord and savior right um <clears throat> ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9 it says god saved you by his grace when you believe you can't take credit for this it is a gift from god salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so none of us can boast about it remember what i was just saying as far as Hey, I do all these great things, man. You know, so shouldn't that be my ticket to heaven? No, because you could still have a wicked heart. Because remember, God judges more the inward versus the outward. He judges the heart. So you could still have a wicked heart, but still good, still do good things. We see this all the time. Like it's not nothing new. So God is like, I'm not going to just judge you or, or give you this free ticket to heaven just because you've done a few good things. It's all about this relationship that I need to have with you. Because when you have a relationship with me and you know me and you live through me, because then now you're gifted with the Holy Spirit, you you become renewed. Your, your, your whole, your, your, your spirit becomes renewed. Your heart is renewed. You are a new creation in Christ. You're no longer the person that you were, you know, before you were saved. So that's why it's so important to have that relationship again. Why would you want to, let's just break it down, even make it more, more simple and more plain. So just imagine that you've been asking, you know, a friend or a relative or whoever it is, you've been asking individuals like, Hey, listen, I want you to come to my house, spend some time with me. Um, I have all these great things for you. I have food, a good roof over that, you know what I'm saying? A, a beautiful home roof over, you know, the, over my head that you can share plenty to drink, you know, all the games in the world to play, just everything, right? You're constantly sending out this invitation. I just want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with you because I feel like you're spending time with me. It will be a great influence in your life. Every time you contact that person, the person ignores you, gets sent straight to voicemail. 
They don't respond to texts, text messages, nothing. And you're like, okay, you're reaching out, you're reaching out because that's what God does. God will patiently wait and he'll still pull us out of situations. And every now and then, you know, that person may hit you up and it's like, hey, I need a favor for this. And, you, and you'll go ahead and do it because you love that person, right? You care for that person. You love that person. But then when it's time for you to spend time with that person, that person is, is ghosting you, is absent, right? So then now let's say years go by, years go by. You decide like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to reach out anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to just focus on other people who wants to spend time with me. And then now all of a sudden when this person has lost everything, they're down and out, whatever it is, they're at the last rope. They could, you get a bang, a knock on the door. And it's like, Hey, and they had this baggage with them. These bags was like, Hey, I'm ready now. Out of nowhere. You're going to be like, uh, excuse me. Who are you? Like, now nah, I'm good. I don't have any room for you over here. What happened all the time that I was trying to reach out to you? Now, all of a sudden, when you are in your last, re- I'm your last resort, pretty much. Now, all of a sudden, you want to co- you want to come and stay with me, or you want to come over here because you lost everything. No, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it because at that point, you feel like you're being taken for granted. You were basically doing life without me, but now all of a sudden, you want to do life with me. Because you lost everything. And that's how God kind of looks at it as. There's this book that I'm, that I'm reading. And it's this phenomenal story. Or I want to say phenomenal. But just an, another eye opener. Where this pastor. He talks about an, an, uh, um, an encounter or an experience that he had. Where he was asked to pray for somebody. And so he goes in. Person is on a deathbed. About to die young person the guy i think the person was like 43 years old so he puts his hands over the person's head they're laying in the hospital bed praying because the person is going to die I believe they got to die of cancer and so he put his hands on the person's forehead and starts praying but while he's praying his eyes is closed mind you he could feel his hand being lifted up so he opens his eyes and he you know his first reaction is thinking like is this guy removing my hand off of his head he's like man maybe i'm going crazy i'm bugging whatever Close his eyes and starts praying again. He feels his hand being lifted up again. He's like, why is this guy you know, moving my hand off his forehead? It's like, let me just try to pray again. Third time. But then he realized, like, I don't think it's the guy. I wonder if it's God. So he's like, you know what? Let me open my eyes. And I'm going to pray my eyes open. So he does that. And he realizes his hands is being lifted up again. And he realizes it's God. And so he goes to God and asks God, you know, why are you removing my hand? And God said, I don't want you to pray for him. Do not pray for him. The reason why is because God tells him, I've been waiting for him for over 30 years. He got saved at the age of 13. And for 30 years, I've been waiting for him to come back to me. And he's never, he never came back. Here's even the kicker. He was like, I even healed him when he had a broken back while committing adultery. He was committing adultery. And while he was committing adultery, I still showed him favor and healed his back that he broke. He broke the guy broke his back and God still healed him while he was committing a, a heinous sin. Right. And you would think that that would be an eye opener. Let me get my life straight. God healed me. No, the guy still continued to do him. So then God told, um, told this pastor, I don't want you to pray for him. Basically his time is up. And because he ignored me all these years, I fall back. And guess who got a hold of him? Satan. And this is why he is going through what he's going through now. That is real. And this is why it's so important to spend time with God, to get a chance to know God. And if you haven't done that already, it's, you know, it's not too late, but you don't want to wait until you get into a situation where you're pretty much close to death and then now you're like hey god i need you god i need you because what's going to happen is luke 13 chapter 23 it states as a as a primary example someone asked him lord will only a few be saved he replied work hard to enter the narrow door to god's kingdom for many will try to enter but will fail 
When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I do not know you or where you come from. Then he, then you will say, but we ate and drank with you. And you thought we thought in your streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Get away from me. All you do is evil. That's Luke chapter 13, verse 23 to verse 27. John chapter 5, verse 29. And they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience the eternal life. And those who have continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. So, what do we do? It's right here, plain and simple. Do life with God. Because the question you got to ask yourself, why would God want me in heaven if I didn't want him on earth? That's the question you need to ask yourself. If I went through life without God, why would I want to do life with God, internal life in heaven? And, and, and that's the, and that's the thing. And it's, it's, it's really just that simple. It really is. So that's why when I read um, her response or the post that she posted, because I've heard this explained it in many different ways or, or responses that people would give, like, why do God send people he loves to hell? And people, you know, they'll give their different responses, pastors or, you know, and, and, and different religious um, Bible teachers and, and so forth. But this was probably the most simple, direct, profound answer that I have personally read. Because to me, it's just that simple. It really is. Would you want somebody to stay with you for the rest of their existence if they have ignored you? Did not receive your phone or didn't want to receive your phone calls, your text messages, your invitations. No, you're gonna be like the seat that I have for you has been taken. I have nothing for you. I've been waiting for you. And that example, what I gave this guy, I've been waiting for this guy for thirty years. If that's not patience, that's a whole lot of patience. And he still gave him favor. And the guy still went the opposite direction. Again, that fork in the road. He could have went left or he could have went right. But he decided to go in the direction of the opposite of what God wanted him to do. And then now prayers that he's requesting or his family's requesting, they're not being answered. They're basically going to God's voicemail or do not disturb. You ever call somebody and it's like it goes straight to voicemail or they put that do not disturb. You're like, man, is this person ignoring me? That's what it sounds like what happened to this guy. And unfortunately, that's what happens to those who want to live a life without knowing God. See, being a believer is a beautiful thing. It really is. I, I, I can honestly tell you, and I haven't been a believer all my life. I've said this all the time. Like being a believer, it's 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 new, but it's not new to me. Right. I remember I first actually got saved back in 2009. So oh, sorry, 2010, I got saved and I got baptized again because I grew up Catholic, but I got baptized again at, at by Church by the Glades. Shout out to Church by the Glades. <laughs> Located in Coral Springs, Florida. I love that church. I still follow them, but that's when I got saved. But then I, after I got saved, you know, I still wasn't living the best, wasn't the, you know, living as a believer. And then back in 2018, I went back and rededicated my life to Christ and I've never turned back since. And I and I kid you not, especially within the last three years, four years, when I see my life just elevated by just really just trusting and living for him, I'm telling you, the last four years has been the best four years of my life. And it doesn't and I say this all the time, doesn't mean I live this perfect life. I just seen God's mercy and favor and his blessings not only over me, but just those around me. And so I don't ever question is if I'm going to have a seat at the table in heaven, I know I'm going to. And it's not because I'm perfect. It's not because I'm this 
holy, righteous man. Because again, I make my mistakes. Every now and then, I'm, I curse. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't help it. Every now and then, I curse. Every now and then, you know, I may let my um, flesh, especially when it comes to like being upset, get the best get the best of me. But one thing that I do do is I don't forget who God is and what He's done for me and my walk, and I spend time with them. And then when I do make a mistake, I go to God and ask for forgiveness. I ask for His mercy, and He gives it to me. And I see the blessings of God continues in my life. And so I just wanted to encourage those who are watching this. I know this is like a little heavy, you know, especially with the last video. But I really feel like, especially the times that we're living right now, where there's there's so much confusion in the world, and it's just so much that's just going on, and so much that's taking place, where we can miss out on a beautiful opportunity to really, really experience the love of God. And if you haven't experienced it, just ask God, pray to God. And, you know, it just just have a conversation with them. There's no secret words or 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 certain vocabulary that you got to use. Um, I know some will say that, but God understands. He knows your heart. Just go to God and ask God, like, hey, God, if you are really real. And I've, I know people who have said this and they said the moment they said this, they experienced God. God, if you're really real, show me. Show me that you are real. And I promise you. He will. He will. If you ever question it, or if you're just not sure, like, hey, I don't know if I really have a seat. I do believe in God. Just redirect, redirect your life back to God or ask God to send somebody in your life that can really help you. One of the things that also helped me was having a mentor. Um, Pastor Maurice, shout out to Pastor Maurice. <laughs> Pastor Maurice is my pastor. He's a head pastor, senior pastor of my church, Winners Church. And we have such a beautiful relationship. Not only he's my mentor, not only he's my pastor, he's also one of my close friends. And I can go to him anytime I have any questions or, or if there's something I'm just not sure of. He's always there to help guide me in the right path. And he's done that for so many other young men and women as well. Like he's just a phenomenal human being. I thank God for him every single day. And our whole pastoral team, Pastor Patrick, Pastor Michelle, Pastor Fabian, Reverend Sam, Pastor Josh, a whole pastoral team. Uh, it's just amazing. And you just ask God to put you in a place, a church or with, and with people that you can fellowship with and really just grow spiritually. Yo, life is good over here with God on, on my side and on and my front, you know what I'm saying? And, and behind me, you know, God basically being the center of my life. Like God, it is such a beautiful thing. I don't have a boring life. I don't have a life where it's just like, man, being a Christian is boring, you know, no, I still have a good time. I'm able to still experience life, but I'm doing it with God. And if there's somewhere that he does not want me to be, he lets me know something I don't need to watch. He lets me know, but this stigma or this perception that us as believers or Christians, is like, yo, we just kind of live in this box and it's simple minded and it's just far from the truth. It really, really is. We turn up to but we just turn up in a different way. That's all. So I hope you hope you receive this message. I hope this message speaks to you. And I definitely want to pray for those that who are struggling in this area. I pray that you'll have that encounter with God and that he will touch your life. He will touch your spirit and that you will grow with God and you experience the love and fear that he has for you because there's nothing like it. Until the next video, as always, one love.